everyone. Thank you so much for joining. This is lesson 12 in our enterprise end-to-end -end solution uh, for our client Microsoft. So I'm really looking forward to uh, getting into some JavaScript right now. Uh, we are going to uh, populate a full name field on our form. Let me show you our form that we uh, added some business rules to in our last video. So um, one of the um, inadequacies was that one of our business rules check the value of this years of experience with D365 field to check to see if the value was uh, greater than or equal to five. And if the value was not greater than or equal to five, then it would throw an error, meaning even if the value was equal to null, and that's obviously problematic. So you're seeing that here because if I put a five here, everything's fine. And then the other issue was that our last name and first name don't concatenate themselves in, into the full name like they do on the contact side of things. Uh, on, and so we're gonna fix that problem. Um, you can see that here. Nothing's happening with the full name field except for some of the business rules of showing and hiding it. So, okay, so let's go ahead and get that fixed up. I'm gonna go ahead and go into Visual Studio code and uh, all right, so I've named my file using my solution prefix uh, as well as my nomenclature, the way I name my file standard, okay? So it's my solution publisher prefix, AYO underscore, and then the table name. If it's an unbound action, then put unbound, underscore the type of uh, web resource that you're using, in this case, JS, and then don't worry about the fact that it's also a JS extension, right? Okay, perfect. All right, so we're gonna put in a function here. Well, not that kind of function. Okay, all right. And then our function is gonna be on change and we're gonna, just FYI, our function is going to receive something called execution context as its first parameter. If you're more, if you're very interested in learning about what execution context is, you can find information all over about it, uh, but most importantly, what we're interested in is getting what is called form context from the execution context object. So right here, you can see me, what I'm doing here is I'm getting, um, I mean, I'm getting an instance of form context by calling the method of get form context from that uh, parameter that's been sent to my function on change. This on change function is gonna be called on the on change of the last name, okay? So we'll try that out here shortly. And then um, the next thing I'm going to do, this is very quick, um, super, super quick JavaScript that we're doing here. First name, we're going to do more videos, tons. First name is equal to form context. This is the get attribute method. So get very comfortable with the get attribute method. Okay. And then you specify the schema name of the attribute. And then you end it with a get value. There's also another one called set value, which you use sometimes. And then in this case, I also want to know what the last name value is. I'm using, well, notice how I'm using for my, the naming of my uh, fields, camel case, lowercase, first name, or first uppercase name. Same thing for last name, okay? So some people follow that, it's up to you. I just, I, I like to follow that rule but you don't have to. So right here, it's get value. Notice how the IntelliSense starts to realize that you're using these, these functions more often. So it helps, tries to help you. Look how much, look how little code we're gonna have to use to accomplish. This is what I like, is lightweight code to accomplish what we want to do, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say if, okay, if first name, and last name, like basically, let's put it this way. They're, either, they're, gonna, they're gonna tell me if they're real. Are they gonna be true or false? We'll find out. Um, then go ahead and form context dot get attribute yo full name dot set value here's that set value i talked to you about 
And inside here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna say first name. And then we're gonna add a plus sign here. Be very careful here. Now we're concatenating. So use quotation signs, add a space. Here's our space between first name and last name. Add a plus sign. And then finally add last name, the variable. Eyeball this thing very well. Look, look for little, little tiny characters that look like there, there might be an issue. I don't see any because you can, it's very easy to miss. We have eight lines of code team. Very good. Okay. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to save this file and I'm going to go over here and I'm going to go into the solutions. I'm going to turn off that business rule. That's so problematic because I want to fix that in our next video. We're going to have a function just for that. So I'm excited for that. And then uh, I'm going to go ahead and then also remember, we only build within our web resources solution team. So if it's a web resource, we're only going to add a web resource here. It might sound like a pain in the butt, believe it or not, but it actually is a really elegant ALM process to do things this way. So I hope you appreciate that. I think you'll, I think you'll like it, honestly. So let's see, is this, is this, could this be the file? I think it is. Except the timing is weird on it. We'll check it out. Okay, so then when you upload the file, name it the same as you would in the other, because in the repo, it's gonna be called like, just like that. So what I want to do is, if I wanna find it as a developer, I'm not gonna find it named, all friendly named and stuff. No, 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 no. I need to know what the backend name of this file is. So I'm going to save it this way. <clears throat> now, what I can then do is now that I've saved this file, I can click on it and I can, I can actually, uh, I believe right over here, I can click on this URL and see, is this the one we just did? It is right. Yeah. So. Okay, that looks good. So let's go back to dynamics. All right. Next thing we gotta do is we do have to add an existing asset, right? We have to add the form. So if we don't add that form, then um, the table, in particular that form, we can add this to the on change event. And then we're gonna remove the form afterwards. But first let's see if it works. So our table is what? The candidate table, right? Okay, it'll be a lot easier in our next video because we we'll already have a solution starting have, that is already populated. The file already exists. We're just making modifications and uploading it back. A lot more, a lot, a lot easier that way. So from the candidate table, I'm going to select only one thing I'm interested in. I'm interested in the uh, candidate form. I'm going to add it. Remember all the customizations, forms, views, all that kind of stuff. Good. It's going to go in business rules is going to go in the, uh, base solution. When we do ALM pipelines, we're going to move web resources to the web resources solution, um, for dev group. Um, when we move customizations, base solutions, uh, we're going to move that to a base solution for our development group and then promote them to our. QA group and so on and so forth. So it's it's going to be a really elegant process that we want to build together. So I'm looking at this this form, um, actually this table. Forgive me, let me be accurate. And I open up this form, and what I have to do is two two things, two things. <laughs> All right. Um, and what it is is uh, the first thing is I need to add a form library, and I need to add that library we just created. There's that library, right? Okay. So I added the library. And then one final thing on the last name field, I need to add a event on change fields only have on change event handlers. 
So I'm gonna, uh, oh, the library is there. Okay, that works. So I'm just gonna confirm this is the library and it's because it's the only app library we have, but then you have to add the name of the function and we call it on change, right? Yep. So we'll pass execution context as first parameter and then we'll hit done. And then we'll save and publish this. And let's see how it works out. Generally, once this is saved and published, it should be ready to roll. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a, just a traditional uh, F12, open up the console. So like right here on this screen, I'm going to do F12. And then I'm going to right click here and empty cache and hard reload. And I'm going to do it like twice. Empty cache, hard reload. Okay. So here we go. If first name and last name get populated into the field. So let's just put in uh, Bugs Bunny. There it is. All right. So it's working, ready to roll. So that's what we needed, right? Let's try this again. Um. Let's see, GI Joe. Very cool, right? All right, so I know it's a very simple, very simple example of this thing, but uh, very critical for you to know. So thank you so much for watching. Next video, we're gonna talk about that error message. We wanna deal with the error message that checks that same logic, but is a little bit more UI friendly, specifically within the Power Apps framework and used as a Power Apps kind of interface for that, okay? Thank you so much and uh, happy to, uh, have had you join our, our lesson today. Have a great day.